Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, even though it, uh, the weekends do go fast, right? Even though they're, you know, a lot of you are home. Anyway, uh, got a couple things to do today. A traditional mosh of a Monday. And the uh, first we want to start off with a couple birdhouses. Yes, a couple birdhouses that were late entries. But what I like about these is they repurpose certain things. And uh, the first birdhouse comes from Jim from Portugal. And uh, Jim made this from an old boat fender, and uh, which I think is really interesting, especially since those boat fenders, when they're not, they'll last forever. So that's very interesting. And uh, the second was one sent in by a, a friend of the show by the name of Manker Stone, and uh, it was a friend of his. And uh, the friend of his was the name of Jimbo Ingram. And Jimbo had passed away uh, suddenly, not too long ago, but he was uh, big into making birdhouses. And look at the beautiful birdhouses that he used to make uh, out of uh, c Coke cans. And you could see he even did roofing with real roofing shingles, so you know they lasted a long time. And, uh, you know, I never got to met Jimbo, but I think I would have liked him. He looked like he, he was a great... Uh, craftsman and he had a lot of imagination and he loved birds so we had three good things in common right there and, and he had a great smile to begin with too so special uh, r.i.p out to jimbo hey, next up real quick i want to talk uh, a little bit about uh one of the channels i subscribe to called perkins builder brothers uh i was subscribed to them when they only had a couple hundred subscribers as one of the new ones but uh they, they're really good they have a lot of good tips on building and craftsmanship and whatnot in there and they're all very talented uh however one of the brothers one of the perkins brothers got injured the other day and uh and it's it's amazing what happened to him was uh it was a, on a jointer and you don't usually hear a joint this can be dangerous but you know this was a uh, a big heavy duty two horsepower jointer and and what happened was he had his ear protection on and he was doing some multiple work and you know and and it was still left on when he was finished using it he was working on the machine and he went over to reach and and the thing sucked his fingers into the jointer and and he lost a couple fingers okay um you know let me tell you something i i have to tell you something that this has been an issue with me for a long time i always feel that sometimes i truly believe that some safety equipment is worse than no safety equipment at all. And uh, I'm going to say that once again because I didn't mispronounce it. Some safety equipment is worse than having no safety equipment at all. And one of those things, they give you a false sense of protection, like ear protection. And, um, and the reason I feel this way is because I had this argument a long time ago with helmet laws. You know, it's, it's legally... You know, you have to wear a helmet. And I understand that with motorcycles and things like that. But let me tell you a story. Why. Now, I grew up growing, um, riding motorcycles since I'm 16 years old. I've had a motorcycle since. I still have one. And um, motorcycles can be extremely dangerous. It's usually the other person, but it can be dangerous. It can be you and any fall. And a helmet does help if you fall, whatever. But also... There was a big problem when, when we were growing up and using... First, we learned to ride on those little rut bikes. Remember those little those little bikes we all had and then from there we we moved up or whatever but we never had helmets as kids you know we didn't please but the thing was when you started to know when you were going fast because your eyes were tearing your face was getting blown back and you knew you know even though you were only doing 20 miles an hour it felt like you were doing 60 okay fast forward to the 1980s all these kids start getting these ninja bikes remember the ninja bikes were the big craze well, they were wearing these full face helmets. Biggest mistake ever. You know, you put these full face helmets on and it puts you, it's, uh, it encapsulates you in a world of, of loveliness that, you know, you're doing 100 miles an hour. You don't hear nothing. You don't feel nothing. And, uh, and that's where the danger begins. Now, I'm telling you that I'm not saying that obviously a helmet is going to help when you fall. But I bet you a lot of those kids that wound up dead because they were going so fast wouldn't be going so fast if they had an open face or a helmet that, that uh, or no helmet at all. Because if you're doing 50 miles an hour, anybody that's ridden a motorcycle before knows how fast 50 miles an hour really is. So it's the same thing in the shop. So, you know, you, 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 you uh, isolate yourself so much from the equipment we're using 
that sometimes, you know, sometimes you need to hear things, you know. It's good to protect your ears when things are over certain decibels, but sometimes your a drill bit starts to chatter. It means it's going to grab or something you know right away. Not if you have ear protection on. So sometimes safety equipment could be worse than no safety equipment at all. How's that for me? <laughs> Today's project comes from my good friend, Jimmy Stiles. Jimmy's all the way over there in Auburn, Washington, you know, the state of Washington. Uh, they were pretty high with the COVID-19 uh, COVID cases until uh, New York found out and said, hold my beer. So, uh, but Jimmy's up there, he's bunkered down and he's putting out some good videos. You know, his, uh, you gotta check out his channel. I'll have the link to it in a little bit. And uh, Jimmy sent in a box. Let me show you now, what Jimmy we got. sent this box to me back in 2019. So, like I said, it takes me a while to get to it. So, again, I was looking for a project to do today, and, and Jimmy sent these in. Some great stuff, right? He knows I love the vintage Craftsman, and uh, he sent some file handles and stuff. He sent this beautiful, we'll talk about this another time. This is a beautiful Miller's Falls. This is the Buck Rogers series. You see these? Excellent. And uh, But he sent in all this stuff. And, and uh, what's great about this, you know, we wanted to get started with... Uh, want to see if we can handle a couple of these craftsmen, you know? Let's take a look at these two for today. Okay, so here are some nice old vintage craftsmen, which I love. First of all, look at this beautiful... Uh, it's a double open end wrench, three quarter and thirteen sixteenths, and uh, you can see here it's a Craftsman or vanadium, vanadium steel always were great and just a beautiful wrench, isn't it? I mean, it's a little worn for wear. We'll take care of that. And a ratchet, a beautiful ratchet, and this uh, looks like a three eighths, and 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 listen to it, it. It doesn't sound like it's skipping any teeth, but we'll take it apart to check out the gears and stuff, but. First of all, let's get to the wire brush, see what it looks like after the wire brush. Okay, here we are at the post wire brush evaluation. Now, Jimmy does awesome restorations on his own, for, so for him to send these to me, I, I much appreciate it, because he could have knocked these out himself, but... Uh, well, let me tell you what we have here, what we're looking at. Now, you can see here, it, it, it clean, they clean up beautifully because it's good steel. Now, you can see here, there's lots of nicks and, and, you know, this is over 50, 60 years of wear and tear, you could see. You know, some of this is going to be just so deep, I don't even know if we can get that out, you know. And, you know, you got a little rust pocket here and things like that. And, of course, you want to maintain the lettering. Uh, however, you could see here, like this size, look at, that's the original grind from the factory. That's not, uh, you know, that's not worn. So beautiful wrench. We'll see what we can do with this. And then for the uh, ratchet, you can see how nicely you got to use the, I, that's why I go to my soft wire brush to get in here to make sure to get all that out of there. But, you know, we still have the outside here isn't as, as good as we can get it. You know, around here, we could still get that better. And uh, let's take it apart and see what we have inside. Okay, everything's apart. Uh, we did a little bit of quick inspection. Other than the gears being uh, dry, they're uh, they're not worn. They look fantastic. Uh, the poles are, are held in here just. There's nothing holding the springs in there. So that can be a nightmare. These things can let go. You got to be real careful. And you just have to remember, look how clean the inside is. It was plated with some kind of a, I don't know, like I used a cadmium or chromium or something like that. So it was plated, but you know, that's worn long since gone. So we'll clean everything up and we'll uh, put it back together, see what it looks like. Now, I know I showed this before, but just real quick uh, to show you how to do the lettering. You take a piece of uh, paper towel, not the bubbly type, not like a bounty. It's got to be kind of a flat grain type. I like the blue shop towels. They also make white shop towels. Fold this uh, like this here and dip it in a little thinner, a little uh, 
there you go, just a little bit of thinner like that, just to make it damp, not uh, wet. Then fill in your area that you want painted. You see, it, you do it a little bit sloppy with a brush, it don't matter because this is the step. Now you're gonna press down here, press hard on this and then lightly drag it across. And you see what happens? You're gonna pick up all the paint on the outside. That's the first time. Now when you do this two or three times, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to pick up the lettering. And, uh, okay, now again, press down on the wrench that flattens out the paper towel, then drag it across like this. Okay, see what's happening? We took more paint off, but see now how clean that outside line is. We're just starting to pick up on the letters and we're gonna do that again and again until the letters start to come out. You see the letters are coming up now? And that's how you do it, simple. Now the last bit of lubrication to put on a ratchet is uh, to take it on a piece of wood here, put it flat with the bull side up. Take a, a drop of three in one oil, put it right on top there. You see how it's resting on top of that ball? Then take a flat blade screwdriver and press directly down and that will let the oil absorb into that ball and you can see the oil is gone and that's how you uh maintain that and that'll be lubricated that's all you need one now you know my favorite part remember what this wrench and ratchet look like before we started and we're calling this project done i'm pretty happy with the way these came out i have to tell you uh these vintage craftsmen they really are sweet aren't they and you can see here, got a nice shine back to this one. Um, obviously the red inside. Look at that Craftsman logo, how it's got the red going all the, the line, the C, traveling all the way down, and the vanadium. And uh, got out all those little crooks around the edges here. That's a little difficult to do, but all that's out. Beautiful wrench. Uh, just, you know, lovely. It was unbelievable. Years ago, they uh, this was a, at a time when they were really putting some design into the into their ratchets and I believe this one might have been made by Proto but uh, everything was taken apart and polished and you could see here all along the edges it's just beautiful now and it's super smooth you can hear it now the thing is that uh, with this particular ratchet um, I lubricate it with the 5050 uh, Marvel Mystery Oil and Red Grease which I that's my go-to ratchet thing and and uh, did the red inside here and you know you could do any color you want but they, they did a lot of red back in the uh the 50s and whatnot and, and this is perfect because your hand doesn't touch any of the paint you know so it won't wear off it only touches the outsides here and just beautiful ratchet love these and the, the wrench jimmy thank you so much these were a great addition i'll put these right upstairs in the toolbox so in closing i want to wish uh, jamie perkins a speedy recovery it's uh just a bump in the road for you jamie it's uh you, this isn't going to define who you are and um and a special thanks out to jim check out mad styles his youtube channel he has a lot of great stuff and and thanks so much for tuning in hope you have a nice day take care now bye bye